What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Dream Build. We've got the roof structure done, we've got the roof steel on, and now we're ready to start working on the walls. First thing we always have to do is install house wrap, and I really think it gives our buildings an extra level of protection that is the money well spent. So I don't even give it as an option. If somebody wants an insulated building, they get house wrap and awesome block it custom rr buildings house wrap it never sticks around too long because we cover it up fairly quickly but i think it's pretty cool just to see you know the brand and the ownership and really just the pride in throwing up house wrap and claiming the building as your own so when people drive by they know they know who's doing the work and you're not afraid to share that and since we're talking house wrap i'll take this couple seconds just to you know kind of remind you guys that there is not a consistency among all house wraps. They're all created a little bit differently. They all do different things. Block it is not being used as a vapor barrier up here in the north where it's colder. Um, we don't want our vapor barrier on the exterior. So this is a breathable weather barrier. We're just trying to keep the wind from penetrating into the building. We don't want our vapor barrier on the outside. We want it on the inside where we're heating and conditioning our space. And so this is strictly for reducing wind or air movement between the two walls, but we still want it to breathe. So this is the best product for us that I've found. It's also very workable. It stretches. It just lays really nice on a post frame. And enough talk about house wrap. Let's get into installing steel because that's what we all came here today to watch. House wrap up, now what we've got to do is we've got to get our laser set up because the difference on a foundation wall versus a, a building with piers, the piers, we've set our grade board to a laser line with the foundation wall. The best we can do is, if you remember, we're gonna push the grade board down tight with that foam seal. That means we can't actually measure off of the grade board to find our dimension for our base trim. So we'll set up the laser and then we will use we'll use one of the marks that's on the inside of that post bracket that we marked when we first set up the building to determine a grade height off of this concrete corner. And we've done that already, so then we'll set up our laser off of that mark so we can be consistent through the whole building and accurate. So when determining where this base trim is gonna be, we've got a back leg that typically is two inches. This is just shy of two inches. So when we put our snap line and set it on the snap line, it'll be at a two inch measurement. What we've got is a bracket on the inside here that we've already laser marked at six and 13 sixteenths. What that means is the bracket is six and 13 sixteenths above finished floor. So what we wanna do is I want this edge right here seven inches. So what we've got to do is we've got to find the difference to snap this line. So what I want this to end up being is this line is gonna be at eight inches, okay? And the top is at 10 inches from grade. 10 inches minus six and 13 sixteenths would be three and three sixteenths from grade. What is that? At this point, I'm realizing that something is not making sense because I've already found my mark on the wall. And now that I'm doing it for the camera, it's not making sense. I'm sure it has something to do with the fact that I'm using the imperial measurements and not using the simplistic metric system. Thanks to all of you metric users out there that keep letting me uh, be reminded of that. But uh, we did figure it out here. And, you know, sometimes you got to do math a couple times because it never lies. So I want the top of this at nine inches from our laser line. We've got uh, the bracket thickness of a quarter inch. So this is actually six and nine sixteenths, mm -hmm. which means I'm going to want it to be at two mm -hmm. and seven sixteenths yep. up from the concrete. Yep. So we already got that inside marked. So we came in, found two and seven sixteenths on the wall. That is where the top of our trim is going to be and we do that yeah, so that this made, two inch lip check on there. will overhang our concrete water will shed over and it'll look nice and pretty so let's go ahead and get uh, laser set up
just arbitrarily grabbing the middle of the trim to set it. That way it'll pivot one way or the other. Never finish your nails until you get it where you want it. I guess we did something right, Greg, because we are hitting our mark. So that's kind of nice. I've shown this before, but we're gonna do it again. I'm gonna square up a line right on the edge. We're always gonna take this dimension times two, which this is usually seven eighths. Always double check it though. Yeah. Just barely over seven eighths difference. My nail is right there. So I'm just gonna just over seven eighths, just over seven eighths times two. The reason I do two cuts instead of one is it's just nicer and easier to make this cut and bend with a smaller piece of steel. So once I've got them marked, using my greens. This is the cut that sometimes people don't think you have to make, but I like to make it. Square this down. This right here, it's just easier to bend these over when it's cut. If it's one solid piece, sometimes it'll kink in the middle, which we don't want that. Now we're gonna make a nice 45 right to that point. And the reason I'm using the greens, you can see, is it just bent this side up and it pushed this side down. That's gonna help aid in my, my bend when I move the trim around. We're gonna cut this top off right to that point. And we'll take just a little more material than our line. Once again, noticing how it pushed this side up and this side down. Now here's the key part, is taking your snips and just making a tight squeeze. You don't wanna cut the material, but this squeeze is what aids in creating that crease so that when it bends around, you get a nice tight, tight corner. Some people might be worried about this having water come into it. There's gonna be steel and then a corner trim cap over all of this, so all this work to make this look nice, it's actually gonna get covered up, but that's okay, because it also just, to me, it's more efficient to uh, to do this than to cut it. And it just looks like crap until your customer, you know, and they walk around the building at the end of the day and you've got this all done, like, hey, that's pretty cool, versus some raw cut edges that just somebody slapped together. You're gonna really disrespect. By the way, Martinez M1, this is the redheaded stepchild. This is the hammer collab I did with Mark Martinez. He was the creator of the stiletto T-bone or really all stiletto titanium hammers. And uh, since he sold that out to TTI, which is the parent company of Milwaukee, he started his own another hammer brand and he took all the design flaws of the stiletto that he knew about and tried to improve upon them with the Martinez. So this is a pretty sick hammer. And I'm definitely proud to be, you know, part of that hammer collaboration. So it's kind of my colors. Redhead stepchild. Right on a nail. Are you kidding me? That's that's unfortunate. You'll get that sometimes. Once in a while. Here you can see now, got the foam here, got the grade board. Um, once again, I'm 
probably I could run the house wrap over top of this, but um, usually what happens when that happens is for whatever reason, this house wrap will stretch. It'll get down to the bottom of this trim. It'll stick out sometimes and just looks unsightly. Once again, remembering that we're not using this as a vapor barrier. We're not expecting water to be getting behind our steel. If so, we've done something wrong. So there shouldn't be water here. We'll have a vapor barrier on the inside, preventing the vapor from coming out into the cold steel. So um, I don't know, maybe Maybe we could run the house wrap over the base trim. Maybe somebody could pipe in. That's a real expert, because I just practice this stuff. Like a doctor, you know, just practicing. We take this, uh, we always on the leading edge, we'll notch it back, and then we'll open up the hem. So that way we can slide it right over top. Kind of get these locked in and make it as seamless as possible. So when laying out the building, we always think about the layout where the ribs are gonna lie. This is a 72 wide structure, which is divisible by three perfectly. So we're gonna just go ahead and we'll hook, we'll hook the end of the wall. First mark in is 37 inches. That is because our rib is at 36 and the leading edge of our steel is gonna be right at 37. We then set a nail and we mark every three foot down the wall. And we do that so we can assure that every sheet is exactly where it's supposed to be because especially when we get to the middle and we've got a rib right here, we want it to line up perfectly with our peak. And then when we get to the other end, we want our rib to center out on the end wall. So you just set a nail right on your mark. Then Zach's marking these out, which hold that there, Zach. But you can see we're at 20 foot 11, which that's actually 21 is the leading edge of our steel. So I'd say we did pretty good, Zach. We're, we're exactly where we want to be on 72 foot. And that's obviously the goal. Just takes a little bit extra time, but it's totally worth it. Now once we've got the base trim up and lasered on pretty much perfect as we can be with the laser, we're just gonna take a snap line and we're gonna make our mark. We always give ourselves a quarter, quarter of an inch above our Wayne's coat steel and that is because sometimes our steel is not perfectly cut. Am I right, Greg? You're right. Yeah, so we've learned to give ourselves a quarter inch of slop in this trim detail and we'll go ahead, we'll get a nice snap line for our what we call double angle D2 trim. It's above our Wayne's coat. So Greg's already got this marked out. You can see here, you can't trust the string line. Sometimes there's just a little bit of sag. So I'm gonna hold it on our laser mark. That was the best snap in the world. Now I'm trying to figure out right now how I snap this while holding a string line. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use some pretty pretty good skills. Gonna hold it. You'd trip over that line, Greg. Of course, we've got our Wayne's coat punched with an AWL and all. I don't know how you say that, if it's an all or an AWL, but I say that and then I look at this one and this one's a scribe. They're basically the same thing. Scribes are a little bit thinner point, so these will usually bend or break way before the awl. But we always keep it handy because we will be needing to repunch these as the pile gets burnt up. Grab a couple sheets at a time. Now this is why we lay everything out. So if you look over here, I've made a nice, we always say a nice rib. So we made a good rib here. We've got our, our good rib lapped over our siphon rib and everything feels great, right? When we come over here and look at our mark, this is our three foot mark. You can see right here that we're about a, not a quite an eighth, but probably about three sixteenths off. What we always got to do is make sure we move this sheet ahead to that mark on the bottom 
and the top. Now you don't want to just pull this because that's just a stretch. Always kind of come back here, move the whole sheet. Then you come back to your good rib and you make sure that it's nice. The goal is, you know, no matter what, you're going to have a seam here, but you want it as nice and tight as possible so that hopefully the average person comes around and never sees it. I always like to just tack the, the outer edge screws and then come back through with the Makita um, driver. It's a lot better and consistent, I think. See, look at this one. This is the inconsistency in roll form steel that you get sometimes. That's how far off I am. I'm going to move that sheet right where I want it. If you were to just lay out a three foot mark top or bottom and just kind of run with it, or if you just laid the sheets and made a nice rib and just screwed them by the end, by the end of the building, you'd probably be, you could be inches off. Nobody wants that, Craig. You know what, Greg? We get a lot of people that request to come build with us to kind of learn and uh, maybe pick up some tips or tricks that it's hard to show on, on camera. But what I'm curious is why we haven't had any women followers say, can I come and watch Greg just work? Hmm. Weird. I thought for sure that would have been probably the everyday email that I got. I just want to come watch Greg work. I'm using the Milwaukee, the Milwaukee Surge. It does, uh, it's, an, it's an hydraulic driver. And so instead of being ran off of a hammer that runs around, it actually uses a hydraulic oil inside there. Just like a, a hydraulic motor, I guess. And it's a lot softer impact and a lot quieter. Now it's not going to give you the performance of some of the other impacts out there. But for doing these little inch and a half screws, it's perfect. Because the vibration gets old after a while. What do you know? That's what just happened. Was just repunching the pile and so I don't know how long this thing lasted. They about three dollars a piece. I bet there's a better option out there, but uh, this is what I've been using. Dang it. So here's something to look at. Look at the, the way this screw is set. It's damn near perfect. Okay, this was done with the um, Milwaukee. It just looks a little bit more overdriven versus the Makita will do a consistent every, every time because it clutches out like a drywall. Problem is this isn't the best for like doing fine fitting. So it's nice to use an impact driver to set the sheet. But man, it is quick. So on this last sheet, typically what we're gonna do is we're always going to try to make it so that our rib spacing is even on both ends of our building. This is an 80 foot wide building, which means it's not divisible by three inches, or it's not divisible by three feet or nine inches. That means that no matter what, I've got a rib every nine inches, which puts a rib at 18 and nine inches from this guy. So I could either move this last rib and the whole wall ahead 
so that it's three inches off of this end, which would put it three inches off the far end. But due to some design issues on this building in particular, we wanted to start with our rib right on the end on that far end. So we're gonna have a rib six inches from this end of the building, which means I'm gonna have a rib and then it's gonna be flat into the corner. I don't like flat corners because this flat steel, the wind can get in there and it can blow it, it can wobble it around. So we're gonna do a little bit of a special bend on this piece of steel so that this end is strong. We get water prevention coming in through our trims and we hopefully avoid any of that wind vibration from that flat steel. Okay, so we're gonna use these, uh, I think they're called like a Versa roller or something like that. Do you remember, Greg? Not a clue. They're from, uh, I bought this one from Dynamic Fasteners. And all this is gonna do is it's going to work up a 90 degree bend, nice and slow, but it's a lot better than doing a hand bend. Does a lot better job. Uh, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna kinda set this in there, and all you're gonna do is give it just a slight bend, and all I'm doing is getting this crease right here. You see this crease, it's developing. I'm just getting it started. This is in a really bad spot due to that minor rib, but we'll get her. And then I slowly, I go back and forth, working the tool perpendicular to the sheet. Finally getting around, it's the end of the day, putting this last piece of steel on, and you can see what we've got over here is this bend up. We bend it up on the edge, and that gives it rigidity here. It gives it rigidity here so that when our corner trim comes over it, it's not all wavy. If this was just a flat piece of steel, typically we like it if our rib is underneath our corner trim, but because of the layout, we have a rib six inches away from the corner. It's not gonna get covered up, but uh, no big deal. We just make our own rib. Once we've got all of our Wayne's coat done, house wrap up, we got our house wrap taped off. No, we're not putting house wrap in the gables. Not really worth it in our eyes. It's a waste of time and effort. Um, for what it is, that's an insulated ceiling up there, so there will be a vapor barrier in the ceiling. A little bit of air infiltration is okay, we just don't want to limit the amount of air coming out of our eave soffits, which are ventilated, so that we can create a chimney effect up to our vented ridge cap. It's always a shame covering up the awesome house wrap, but we'll be excited to get this done. Those are some tall sheets. 25 feet, should be fun. And once we start running our end wall steel, our sheets will get long in a hurry. And even though you're only adding a foot to every sheet due to the 412 pitch, three foot sheet, that's uh, four inches per foot. So on a three foot sheet of steel, we're gonna go up a foot every sheet. So it makes it really easy once we get our first measurement in the corner. All we are going to do is add a foot to every, you know, sheet that follows. So if we're at 16 foot 8 on the long point of our first sheet, the next sheet's long point will be 17 foot 8 and so on and so forth. So they can be kind of cumbersome to stand by yourself, but you know, obviously a bunch of guys on a job site, we're always competitive and anytime we get into a large building, we usually see who can uh, stand the peak sheet by themselves, and this was my turn. Show us how it's done, Kyle. Of course, Greg always likes to taunt me, and I would do the same to him if he was trying to stand it, which obviously we want each other to be successful because it's kind of important that we don't damage the sheet. 
and you know the biggest thing when handling long sheets of steel is making sure that they're curled up if you keep them curled up they will usually stay very straight and rigid what a man it's the living legend kyle d stumping horse you know here on this channel we're always talking about tips and tricks and how to well here's more of a personal tip if you're gonna work with somebody for nine hours a day make sure you enjoy them because if i didn't enjoy greg i'd probably get really annoyed with them not too bad kyle not whoa wait from there oh perfect <laughs> About, I wouldn't say max, would you, Greg? How far can we go? As in, like, height wise? Tallest sheets. Tallest sheets? What have we done? Probably 84 wide. Well, I think that height sometimes has. This is 17.6 this is, uh, walls. So, really, it's not even a 72 wide, 18 foot tall, which is probably our, you know. Is that, that your tallest, or you done an 80 wide? I did uh, Masters. 80 by 200? Oh, Masters. that was 72. Yeah. You didn't do the end wall on uh, the 80 by 200 in Streeter? Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. I was, I was cutting. Okay. Now we're going downhill, so it's only going to get easier. So, yeah, there you go. Really, the lesson here is just that you work hard all day. You also got to play hard. You got to have fun. You got to enjoy the people you work with. You got to make it interesting and almost make it a game. I mean, we're competitive and we always just try to do better. And that also keeps the day interesting. So this barn is going to have two 20 foot lean tos attached to it. And so what we're going to do is I don't really want to wait to put all the steel up on the wall before the lean tos are built. I'm hoping to start digging those holes tomorrow. Good weather, we should get the holes dug, concrete poured, and then Monday, because today's Thursday, tomorrow's Friday, Monday, we should be able to build the lean tos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snap some lines and I'm gonna install my ceiling trim that's gonna go underneath the lean to so that we can run the steel up to the ceiling of the lean-to before we even frame it. And sometimes it's a little bit weary, but I'm also going to hopefully trim out the connection trim or my pitch break that goes on top of the lean-to roof. Now when I do that, I'm locked in to exactly where that is. So everything's gotta be right, but math never lies. And as long as I am diligent on my, you know, simple math, I should be okay. We're getting close to the end of the day here, but I'm gonna try. I just got this ceiling trim defined, installed, got the house wrap taped off, and now we're going to move some steel around, hopefully get this, these eight foot two inch sheets, get those whipped out real quick, get them hung. I don't know if we'll get them all screwed off today, but I would love to cover as much house wrap as possible. Uh, with a post frame, you don't get to staple all over the place like sheeting. You only get to staple on your girts. Makes it harder to install and hard to keep it, uh, you know, blowing off in the wind. But got this end wall done today. That was some tall sheets and feel good about that. That really locks in the structure side to side. Not to mention now that the roof structure is done. This building is really getting strong now. We get this side locked in and it's it's not going nowhere short of mother nature just really having something out for it so in typical rr buildings fashion uh bets were made that there's no way i could install all of this steel myself in a matter of 10 minutes so 80 feet in 10 minutes um i think obviously not installing it screwing it and finishing it all but it was putting all the sheets up, tacking off the bottom, and getting to a point where we could, you know, successfully leave for the day. Um, I don't know why I do this stuff to myself. Honestly, like I said, it's just because we like to have fun, we like to be competitive, and it makes the day go by even faster. But also, it helps with production. You know, if you can um, make a game out of it, make it fun, you'll probably work a little bit harder, be more efficient because you wanna win, and that's just kind of how I do things in my personal life and in the work life is I'm always just trying to find ways to be more efficient and be competitive with myself. So, you know, keeps it interesting. Holy cow, I think my shoulders will probably fall off tonight in the sleep. 
And then I'd definitely probably be taking some ibuprofen because Zach just bet me I couldn't run that steel in 10 minutes. I think I did it in just over nine. Uh, then an old customer of ours showed up, so I had to take a little break. It was well-deserved. And after standing all these sheets, these sheets, I'm ready for a break. Unfortunately, tomorrow's Friday and we got another hard day in front of us we're going to get these piers for the uh right here we got a 20 foot lean to so we're going to go ahead and dig those piers in on this side and the other side of the building hopefully then we are ready monday to build those and man we're going to be wrapping up this exterior pretty darn quick so that means i need to probably call my supplier and get my interior steel uh lined up hmm it's always good to kind of talk through these things because as a business owner that's on site every day working sometimes you can get caught up in the process the moment and kind of forget where your schedule is at so I'm always always trying to do my best to kind of stay on task stay on schedule uh, make sure I've got things lined up for the guys coming up uh, across the board so it's it's always good though I love the challenge 